Hey guys, this is Nate with Bleep and Jeep. With the help of Rough Stuff Specialties, I'm finally gonna get to update and upgrade the worn out old steering in my Jeep TJ. Today we're gonna be using the 7 8 Heim Joint steering kit from Rough Stuff Specialties. Um, this comes with inch and a half by quarter wall DOM tubing. Please focus, there we go. You can see that's some really thick wall um, steering. And then we've got our 7 8 Heims, of course. We've got our misalignment spacers, jam nuts, weld in bungs. Um, kits like this are not going to come with the hardware you need because depending on how you have your steering set up, it's going to change the length of your hardware. So you will need to go and buy this once you figure out exactly what length you're going to need. So the other thing we're going to get to play with today is one of these little sleeves. I've seen these and I've never used one. I've, I've been kind of fascinated with them. I think that it's a really good idea. Uh, I didn't I didn't see these whenever I had built the steering originally, like nine or ten years ago. Um, and so when I saw that Rough Stuff carried them, I decided to pick some up and try it out. I mean, it's a really simple way to mount the tie rod side for your hydraulic assist. And so what I did is I just cut the old mounts off of uh, or the old tabs that I'd made, you know, a decade ago, <laughs> off of my other setup earlier today. And then I welded them onto this. And this will be kind of a cool way to locate that. These also come pre-threaded, so you can use a bolt um, to thread through there. But I actually have a 7 8 bolt for my RAM, and I didn't want to have to like drill and tap this out for a 7 8 bolt. I'd rather just weld some tabs onto it that I already had made and uh, just simplify things a little bit. You'll notice I took some C-clamps, and I clamped a straight edge to the bottom of this, and that is going to make it a little bit easier to eyeball and make sure that this is somewhat close to straight. We want to keep this as straight as possible um, and then whenever we do our uh, measurement for our toe we're going to be able to measure from the outside of this to the other side and then the outside of this to the other side and if the numbers are the same then the toe should be perfect. This axle is out of a 76 F150. It's a Dana 44. The knuckles are out of a 78 F250 and um, the reason I did that is because the F250 knuckles have a flat spot on top that makes it to where you can mount a high steer arm on top of them. This kit comes with four different styles of misalignment spacers. Uh, you've got these short fat little guys and there's four of them and these are for the tie rod. And then we've got the standard misalignment spacer and then something called a safety misalignment spacer. I've not seen safety misalignment spacers on any other website. Um, I haven't gone looking, but I've never come across them before I saw them on Rough Stuff's website. It's a cool idea, but I don't fully understand what they do. It has something to do with uh, eliminating an extra shear location, I guess because it's taller or wider or something. They have an explanation on the website, but I couldn't grasp the concept. Um, if you have any questions on that, maybe shoot them an email or just refer to their website and see what they do. But one thing I could figure out was how they mount. So you can see I've got the safety misalignment spacer on the bolt head and that's how they show they want you to mount it on their website and so that's how we're going to mount it here speaking of which we are going to do that right now the upper link is our drag link the lower link is our tie rod the tie rod is where we're going to mount our hydraulic ram which is why i insist that this is double shear um, and then this is a three quarter inch grade eight bolt that goes through and joins the whole thing together it's a very strong unit um, and it's be, the reason I went with a 7 8 Heim is because then whenever you use the misalignment spacers, it brings it down to a 3 quarter. If you use 3 quarter Heims, it's going to bring it down to a 5 8. I wanted to have the larger bolt because I want to have extra strength. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with mounting our drag link. Now, with the way my Jeep is set up, I'm going to have to put a bend in it, unfortunately. If you can keep these straight, it makes it a lot easier for adjustment, but... I, that's not the case for me. Now, the good thing is I have benders. I have all the tools it's going to take to bend around some of this stuff. Um, but I want to keep my track bar, or sorry, my sway bar, and I would have to move this mount in order to get a straight shot um, for this drag link. So, no big deal. I'll just put a little bend in it, and then uh, it, once we get this, uh, this side lined up straight, and we get this drag link mounted up, then we can get started on our tie rod. To make this bend, I'm going to use my Harbor Freight tubing bender. Uh, it's cheap, it works fine for stuff like this, and then I don't have to fire up my compressor to use my JD Squared bender. Um, so this is really easy, it's just a hydraulic ram basically, it's just mounted with a couple of dies. And the reason I'm going to bend this first, before I cut it, is because the way the bender, let me grab you real quick, 
the way this bender is designed, it makes it to where um, you can't bend like right on a joint. So basically I have it set up to where it's going to bend super close to this because I know that we're going to be really close to our heim joint. And so I'm going to put our bend in it and then I'm likely going to have to trim the end off in order to get the bend close. So I don't want to cut the material first, have it be too short to put the bend where I need it. Perfect. Now we got to double check to see if our bend is going to clear. Ooh, full lock. We just barely make it. Holy cow, that's close. Well, that'll do it. We've got probably ooh, a quarter inch or so, maybe just a hair under, but that's full lock and we're not hitting. So I'll take it. I put a little bevel around the edges and now I can tack weld this in the Jeep. This next part's kind of hard by yourself. It's definitely easier with two people. Um, so we're going to pull a measurement from that side to this side. We are at 62 and a quarter. Now we're going to pull a measurement off the back. And we are at 61 and a quarter, so I'm slightly off. What we're going to do is we're going to get these two measurements to match. All right, now we're 61 and a half. And once we get these two measurements matching, then we can figure out how long we need to cut the piece for our tie rod. I'm gonna put two bends in this. I'm gonna put one here and one about in the same position on the other side, just to kind of make it uniform across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a measurement from here to about the same side, or about the same area on the other side, and then I'll figure out where exactly to put my two bends. Everything's tack welded together. Now I just gotta check clearances. Clearing here just fine. It's pretty tight up here, but I'd say, ooh, just a little less than a quarter still. So we're clearing, we're clearing everywhere. Let's check the other way. Looks like everything clears. We're still clearing up here, just barely, but we are. And we are clearing down there, so. Everything's looking good. Now we can pull these off, finish weld around them, and then I get to locate the collar for the uh, mount on this hydraulic ram. Everything's been welded up. I'm just letting it all cool, and there's no trick to this. I just will weld what I can reach, and then I'll loosen up the vise, I'll turn it, I'll weld what I can reach and I'll just do that until I go all the way around and then I flip it over and go to the other side. Before you thread your heim joints back into the weld on bungs, um, I would recommend throwing a healthy dose of anti-seize on the inside of the threads and then on the uh, threads that are on your joint itself. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of distortion whenever you weld real hot like I do and uh, it can kind of make it hard to reassemble this stuff and you don't want to be having any issues um, whenever you're taking it back off in the future as well. If you can put some grease or some anti-seize in your threads, it's going to help keep uh, dirt and water out. So whenever you go to adjust this in the field, it's going to be a lot easier. Steering is located. Everything's good to go. I double checked the toe. The toe is perfect. Um, I like to tow mine or the wheels toe out just a little bit so it's a sixteenth of an inch wider in the front from the point that I measured than it is in the rear. Um, and if I go drive it and I don't like it then I can always change it. But I usually do about a sixteenth of an inch wider in the front and it drives a little bit better on the road in my opinion. I know that factory a lot of vehicles uh, recommend or a lot of manufacturers recommend their vehicles be adjusted to where the toe is out just a hair and so this is kind of the same deal. 
Now I'm gonna try out mounting this cool little coupler and see how it fits on there. As you can see, this kit is very, very simple. Um, a few things I wanna talk about. You don't need a porta band to cut this stuff. You can just use an angle grinder. I use an angle grinder for years, but once I picked up a porta band, I prefer to use it uh, because it doesn't kick up a bunch of dust and stuff. So you can cut this tube with whatever you got laying around. Also, you don't need a welder to build kits like this. So don't think that you're gonna have to have high-end tools. What I used to do before I got a welder, a long time ago, is I had cut the original steering um, for this with a kit that I bought from Rough Stuff, like I said, like in 09 or something like that. And I cut everything, made sure that it was all gonna work, and I took it to a welding shop, and the guy charged me like 20 bucks, and he just welded everything for me. So you can still save money without having the tools, you're just gonna need an angle grinder to cut this or whatever you've got laying around that you think can cut this material. I didn't show you how to drill these knuckles. It's really easy. If you're using a three quarter bolt, you just get a three quarter drill bit and you drill it. Um, some self tapping, not self tapping, excuse me, some cutting fluid um, is all you need. Just use lots of cutting fluid, use a normal drill. You don't need any special machining tools. I usually drill these on the Jeep. There's no reason to take the knuckle off or anything like that. You can get a good square hole just by taking your time and drilling straight. One of the coolest parts about this kit is that you have a lot of options in the way you mount all of this. You can see the way I mounted this. I mounted this double shear and I mounted this on top. It doesn't have to be in this orientation. Um, before I had these knuckles, I would mount it, you know, it was a similar thing. It was just two links and I would mount uh, my tie rod on the bottom and then I would mount this on the top, just going through the knuckle with one single bolt. And that, I had no problems with that. I've never sheared a bolt. I've never had any issues doing it that way. So you don't have to have um, a high steer arm in order to use this kit. This kit is very universal, which is one of the reasons that I like these so much. Um, and you can do it in a, a number of different orientations. I would refer to their website to see some of the different options you have. Drilling your pitman arm is also very easy. Again, it's a three quarter bolt, so you drill a three quarter hole. Um, what I do is I take these off, I mount them in the vise where they're really tight, and then low speed on a drill and lots of cutting oil, very simple. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and uh, like the video. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to Bleep and Jeep, please do so. We've got a ton of content like this, uh, almost a thousand videos, and um, we are a community of people across the United States who we film different projects we're working on and we put it on our channel and share it with you guys. Uh, if you want to support Bleep and Jeep, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, you can use Patreon, and then those donations go to buy the different equipment and stuff that it takes to have a YouTube channel that's worth watching. Um, if you want to support us in other ways, then support the people that support Bleep and Jeep. Rough Stuff Specialties provided the steering kit for this video, and if you're interested in a steering kit like this, uh, make sure you go check them out. They have a ton of good fabrication equipment, and they have always been great to work with for us. Um, one last thing, if you want to follow me on social media, I am at Bleep and Jeep Nate on Instagram, and we will see you next time.